Today's video, 16 really useful things that you might want to take bikepacking. Even if you're a seasoned rider, there might be some stuff on this list you might not have considered. Number one, volley or ski straps. These were originally designed to hold skis together, but they're really good at strapping stuff to your bike. They're basically a stretchy rubber strap with a belt buckle style thing on the end. You can link two together to make them longer. They are super, super strong. These orange ones are the first ones that I got. They're a little bit worse for wear now. You can also get more fancy ones. These ones are made by Tailfin in collaboration with the uh, Voile company. A little bit smaller, but do the same stuff. Even if you don't need them when you set off, it might be worth taking some in your bag because you never know what you want to take with you during your trip. Emergency bivvy. It's basically a big waterproof bag that packs down really small. Now this I would take on a trip when I'm not planning to camp. So I haven't got a normal bivvy with me. Luckily I've never had to use it, but there came a time when I was out of reach of the accommodation and needed shelter. I could combine this with a down jacket and leg and arm warmers and you basically have a makeshift sleeping arrangement that will get you through the night with enough protection from the elements. Roll up shoes or rock ball shoes. This is not their intended use, but they roll up really, really, really small. Probably the lightest thing you can get in terms of footwear. Not for everybody, but if you're doing an event where you want to be as light as possible, these are a really good option. They're also like five quid. I'm with Jimmy for this one. Satellite tracker. Garmin in reach mini. Bing! <laughs> this one's quite dependent on where you'll be going, but it could literally be a lifesaver. Like it's actually got an SOS button on it. The example here is the Garmin InReach Mini. Jimmy has one, we've been bikepacking together. I don't have my own yet, but I will be getting one when I do go traveling abroad. Once set up, this device will relay your location at set intervals, which you can choose. And it will allow people to track where you are. So if you're going somewhere that's dangerous or really remote, you can let your loved ones know exactly where you are in the world. You can also send messages to people. I'll flash up an example on the screen of when we were in Scotland and Emily was messaging you, or you were messaging Emily. Did she message you? Boop. Um. No, she doesn't care about you. I messaged her yeah, to so. say we weren't dead. We, it's to say we hadn't been eaten by bears. The special bit is that it does all of this without needing any phone signal. It works through a completely separate network of satellites. Battery life is absolutely ridiculous. If it's set to do intervals at 30 minutes apart, then it lasts 24 days. It's got an SOS button, conveniently under a little cap, so you don't accidentally press it. Demonstrate pressing it, and the emergency services will turn up. <laughs> Looking back, we were a little bit silly not having one of these with us when we were in Vietnam, because we got lost in a jungle. It's outrageous that you haven't had one of these previously. <laughs> It's really bad, isn't it's it? Earplugs. So cheap, so simple, so valuable. These can turn a terrible night's sleep camping into a mildly tolerable one. How much fun you have on your bikepacking trip can be very reliant on how much sleep you get and the quality of that sleep. Take some earplugs with you, they take very little bag space up and they'll probably make your trip a lot better. Water filter bottle is a bottle that filters water, obviously, but they now come in cycling size bottles, which is really handy. We first used one of these over in Vietnam when James got one for Christmas and we ended up using it all the time. Should we do a product plug? Who's it made by? Grail, not sponsored, but really good, really good piece of equipment. Mine is now covered in It was brilliant because the tap water in Vietnam wasn't safe to drink and we could filter it through there and decant it into other people's bottles and then we were set for the first few hours of the day. It also came in extremely handy when we were in the middle of nowhere in a jungle and we did find a stream to drink from which we could then safely use because we had the bottle. One of these or something similar will be coming with me for the foreseeable future on all bike packing trips, even in the UK because you never know when you might end up in the middle of nowhere. This one, it's in the lid so you can just drink out of it as soon as you've put it inside the bottle. Packable down jacket. This one's made by Patagonia. It's a micro puff. It makes you look like a worm when you zip up the hood. As you spend more money on a jacket like this, it either gets warmer or smaller. And when you're packing one of these away in your bikepacking luggage, you'd be surprised how much space they take up. This one's fairly decent, packs down pretty small. They make an even smaller one called the Nano Puff. Uh, which is very slightly lighter, so it won't keep you quite as warm. I found that this one is a nice happy medium. You may want to also explore gilets if space is an option because the lack of sleeves really does mean it gets a lot smaller. I would take one of these even if I'm going to the hottest countries. I ended up using this loads in Australia and Vietnam. And both of those are hot places. If there's any risk of this jacket getting wet, then you might want to consider getting a synthetic down one rather than real down because it dries much quicker. A dedicated GPS head unit. 
instead of a phone. Basically, one of these devices will measure a host of different metrics via GPS, and the higher end ones will let you navigate as well. Smartphones are totally usable to track your rides, but there's a few reasons why you might want a dedicated head unit, especially if you're bike packing. Firstly, most head units battery life will far exceed those of a smartphone, especially when GPS is running. This is a Garmin 830 and it lasts about 20 hours and you can extend it more, which I'll talk about later. The head units in the Garmin range have all got varying levels of navigation from a simple breadcrumb or dotted trail right up to full mapping. I would recommend if you're doing bike packing that you go for one with full maps, which also lets you change routes on the fly as well. Anything can happen when you're out riding and the matter stuff always tends to happen when you're bike packing. It's just the way it is. I'd rather have a dedicated head unit out in the elements and my phone safely tucked away in one of my bags for peace of mind. Further to that, if I was to have an accident and crash, I'd rather have to replace a about 300 pound head unit than a more expensive phone. Having two items with similar features that you can use as a backup to each other is better than having one. Lastly, a lesser known feature on a lot of the Garmin head units, you can set up alerts. So if you're doing an ultra or a really, really long bike packing ride and you're likely to be tired, and potentially gonna forget to eat, you can set yourself up reminders at different time intervals or even different mileage intervals, pretty much any regular interval that you want. There's even a smart alert feature which triggers based on your ride conditions. So it calculates it via elevation gain, speed, temperature, duration, that kind of thing. Really useful if you need a reminder to do anything, like sleep, if you're doing an ultra. Bib shorts with pockets in basically didn't exist when I started cycling. Now they're creeping into a lot of kit companies' ranges. It's basically two more really handy places you can store food or phones or whatever you need quick access to during your ride. Extra storage space is always welcome when it comes to bike packing. A couple of things to bear in mind though, the pockets are generally not waterproof and it's quite a common place to land on if you have a crash. So consider what you put in those pockets carefully, speaking from experience here. Another one at Jimmy's house because he uh, had some props. Dehydrated meals. These are meals that you have to hydrate with a lot of water. Just, uh, well nice, yeah. A bag like this, which is wafer thin, is 500 calories. You just have to add quite a lot of water to it. So combining it with the water filter bottle, which is also on this list, uh, you've got a pretty good solution to get some calories if you don't have access to anything else. I've not had these ones. These are both dessert ones that were on the list for when I was uh, going on adventure, which didn't end up happening for the re well, the obvious reason that everyone's aware of now. Um, Covid. Covid, yes. Dal and rice and spinach. Because we haven't been able to go on an adventure for some time, it's about to go out of date. So I think we should get have the a kettle on. So what do you think? Mm. I knew it was lightweight. They always have lines on the back of them. You fill them up with boiling water, which you do on your little camping stove. Leave it, give it a stir, seal it, leave it 15 minutes. Doesn't look good, does it? It's like uncooked rice. The flavour's there. I need this to get home. How much is that? 500 calories? Yeah. 7 out of 10. <laughs> Wood bang again. <laughs> Valve extenders. Even my mountain bike wheels are quite deep now. So unless you have the shallowest of wheels, take some valve extenders with you. Depending on where you're going, you might not have access to a well-stocked bike shop where you can get inner tubes with valves that are long enough for the sake of a tiny, tiny bit of bag space you can save yourself a lot of hassle. The best type, in my opinion, are the ones that are just a tube because you don't need to have removable core inner tubes to use them. They're just a tube that you stick on top. Battery technology has got really, really good in the last few years and when me and my buddies go bikepacking, we always take these. One of these each, usually. This is a high volume power bank. This one's made by Anker and you can basically recharge all of your stuff multiple times from it. You get multiple phone charges, you get even more charges of a head unit, and obviously you can recharge the bank itself whenever you stop at a power source. Ideally, you wanna be self-sufficient for as long as possible, and you never know when like a pub's gonna be closed or a cafe's gonna be shut. You never know when you're gonna need power to access your phone, which may be dead. Honorable mention here to the Garmin Charge Pack. This is a small power pack, which is specifically for Garmin head units. It doesn't just work with the 1030, it also works with the 830, and any of them with this small contact patch on the bottom and it gives you approximately 24 hours more battery life for your head unit. It clips onto the bottom of a normal Garmin mount and then you clip the head unit on top so you can use your Garmin while it's charging. You can also use it to charge other devices with a USB cable like a normal power bank. Also nice because it doesn't take up any bag space when it's mounted like this. Cable ties. Another thing that is very, very small and doesn't take up much bag space. So probably worth taking even if you don't end up using it. But on our travels, we've come across quite a few situations where they have been really useful. Any situation where you need to attach stuff to other stuff 
they probably come in handy. For example, broken spokes, brake hoses that have gone wrong and you need to tie them to the frame so they don't flap about. Feel free to get creative. Better to have them and not need them than not have them and need them. Food pouches or stem bags. There's a host of different brands available. Whatever the setup that you're running in terms of bike bags, I'd recommend having one of these on because it's a very convenient place to store food. And if you don't have a convenient location for your food, you end up not eating as much as you need. Keeping on top of nutrition and fueling is integral to having a successful bike packing trip. So little choices like this can make a big difference. If they're basically a bag with an open top, I would recommend getting one with a drainage hole because they are fill up with water otherwise. Garmin Varia Radar. This is featured uh, for good reason in my tips videos before and it's everyone's favorite apparently based on the comment section. So this is a really useful device that lets you know your surroundings and when a car is approaching from behind, it also alerts you on your head unit. So particularly when you're bikepacking, you might be tired, you might not be doing shoulder checks as often. This produces an alert on your head unit that tells you when something's coming and at what speed. Of course, it depends on where you're going bikepacking to how useful this will actually be because off-road it won't be as important. It works particularly well when you're on quieter but faster roads. So in situations where you end up relaxing and then a car can take you by surprise. There are a few different versions available, but this one with the light is probably the most sensible for bike packing because it serves two uses. A Leatherman multi-tool. There's a surprising amount of times on bike packing trips where I've needed a pair of pliers. I ended up buying one of these after Chris Hall recommended it to me. Knife, pliers, and Allen keys all on one multi-tool. I would recommend using one of these in conjunction with a regular bike multi-tool with a chain tool on it as well. Again, really useful having both if you lose one. I wouldn't take this on a normal ride, but if I was bike packing, doing cable maintenance and valve cores and that kind of thing, it's really useful having the pliers on the end. The Allen and screwdriver bits come off and you can lose these quite easily. So that's why I always take the duplicates in the form of another multi-tool. That marks the end of this video. If you have any suggestions for useful bike packing items that are a bit unusual, put them in the comment section down below. If you wanna check out any of the stuff I mentioned, I'll put it all in the description down below. Please like this video, subscribe to this channel for more, and I'll see you soon.